Smokin' Jay is back. Smokin' Jay Cuddy Woody is back in the fold. Yes, He's already hyping up Devontae Parker as the next Alshon Jeffrey. Woo! Yeah, that doesn't sound like hype. That sounds like a curse. Like he's going to get hurt. No, oh, when Smoke and Jay says it, it's official. <laughs> That's true. I want to see true. DP's ADP climb all the way up to the fifth round. Oh, God. It might. I hope not. Well, we're doing we're doing zero RB, so when would you uh, draft Devontae Parker? Probably like the the 10th pick of the first round. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, that's convenient, <laughs> isn't it? What a uh, pick that would be. No, like I'd probably take him in the mid-rounds. I actually like him a lot more with Cutler, just because Cutler has the, the D-gaff factor of just, just throwing it downfield regardless of consequences. Yeah, since we're talking about the Dolphins, do you think a Jahi's value takes a hit with Jay Cutler? Or do you think it, he retains more value post-Tannehill injury? I think it probably ends up about the same. I'm not too worried about it. I don't remember, like, Tannehill having especially high, like, dump-off numbers, at least compared to, like, Cutler historically. Yeah. So I think it'll probably be about the same. I don't I don't think Cutler is really any worse than Tannehill, and that's, like, the age has really gotten the better of him. Yeah, well, we're going to do a zero RB, a post-hype zero RB mock draft for you guys. Mm-hmm. So I'm Derek. I guess we should do an official intro, right? Oh yeah. We still do those things. Sure. Do people really care? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I am Leo, the better half of Bench Dash, as they say. Who, who hasn't won a championship in years? What? I mean, years is accurate, but that makes it sound longer than it's been. What have you done for me lately, Leo? <laughs> oh my God! Helped you win last year. You took all my hot takes and just used them against me. Sounds like an excuse. Oh, we're about to get started. Oh, Woo, this is getting started. excited. Oh, Jesus. And running, you're you're running, still running. on that. <laughs> I thought that was only an off-air thing. No, you brought I it. always bring it on air. No. Bring it on air. Oh, man. Zeke? Zeke when? Does wow. he not know? <laughs> I don't think this guy knows. Well, we were going to talk about Zeke. But anyways, let me make my pick. Okay. Uh, we're, since we're going zero RB, I'm just going to stick to the strategy here. But yeah. The values there anyways but i'm gonna take not antonio brown oh. but one julio jones oh quintoris yes. quinn ford torres i think he's due for some positive regression in terms of his target numbers 2015 193 targets last year 125 i'd say he would at least be around 150 160 this year and he still dominates so easy pick for me you're up uh, I'm going to take one. I don't know what AJ stands for in AJ Green. Do you know? Uh, Antonio Jackson. You don't know. All right, I'm going to take AJ Green. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound legitimate. <laughs> it did not sound. I would have taken Melvin Gordon there, but we're going to RB. I'll take AJ Green. I'll live with maybe it. It's, maybe it's Antonio Julio, and he's the combination of <laughs> Julio Jones and Antonio Brown. I mean, that's... Uh, I feel like he'd be, have better numbers if that were the case, if he was really the combination of them. <laughs> well, have you seen some of his games, though? He it's can like definitely every beast. other week type of thing. That's true. Some weeks he's AJ, some weeks he's just green. <laughs> just green. <laughs> he's, oh, weeks, Michael Tom. Oh, oh, let's see if a Jordy Nelson falls in my lap, if the gods smile upon me, because that's who I would take here. Yeah, why don't you explain to the good people who may not know what Zero RB is all about, what the hell we're doing. Because if they see us passing on some of these running back values, they're probably like, what is, what's going on? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Zero RB is you pass on running backs in the early rounds because of the, the risk that they offer for the safer picks, the like lower ceiling, higher floor, early wide receiver picks. And you do that for five-ish rounds. Ooh, I'm going to take Jordy Nelson here. Blood out. There. Um, you do that for like five ish rounds and then load up on, um, to like depth running backs who have an opportunity to fall into starting roles or like, or maybe already are like RB twos and you hope to hit big on someone that falls into a, a starting role at some point. Like a CJ pro size. Like wow. Procise. Look at that RB run, which leaves me Ooh. with a Dez Arnamari, but guess what? I'm going to make a homer pick here oh and God. take Amari Cooper. Oh, my God. 
because if you look at the third year wide receiver metric, that's a real stat. <laughs> Sounds right. Um, Amari, Amari Cooper is in his third year, which means that he's obviously going to improve exponentially. But to be real, I think Oakland's offense is going to be even better than last year. Amari Cooper should see an uptick in red zone usage, which has always been his downfall. At least the first two years has been his downfall. I think they're going to try to get him more involved in the red zone. He was working with Calvin Johnson, Megatron in the offseason. That's going to do it right body there. body position in the end zone. That's it. But I mean, is I'm, Seth I'm Roberts Brian. still there? <laughs> Seth Roberts is still there, yes. The red zone maven? <laughs> All he does is catch game-winning touchdowns. I mean... Too bad so the I'm Raiders taking him are going to regress day. into a zero and sixteen season. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> maybe maybe if Derek Carr breaks his femur in week one, God, I hope I didn't just jinx him. You just did. It's going to happen now because of that. you made that joke. Now it's over for him. What? I'm going to have such. Okay, well. Jeez. I guess you can take gonna, Dez gonna, too. <laughs> I is... can take Dez too. Right. I, I was debating between Amari and Dez before, but yeah, yeah, I'll just take Dez. This is never going to happen this? ever again. Yeah, this is Julio, Amari, Dez. I this mean, turned out to be the perfect God. zero RB start for you. That's oh, crazy! Now I can actually just grab a running back. I'm happy with uh, those three elite wide receivers. Those are all wide receiver ones. What's yeah. going on here, guys? <laughs> Terrell Pryor. The first pick of the third round, this guy's buying into the hype. He's he's buying into it. Um, we are doing this in standard. The like, oh my god! All right, yes. I guess I'll take Demarius. Um, cause As a wide receiver, three. Why not? Yeah, I'll take Demarius here. Get a get a nice floor. Um, like it's traditionally a PPR draft strategy, but it's always been said it works fine in standard. So we're trying it in standard. There it is. Let's see how we feel. Yeah. So, looks like we're the only two teams that have gone triple wide receiver to start. So now I know last year they were talking about wide receiver in the first four rounds, maybe. Yeah. But when do you think you should kind of uh, zig away from the old zero RB zag? Uh, I think after the first three, you can really start to look at if there's any like crazy value that slid too far. Um, I don't know if I really see that running back right now. Like there's running backs I like, but no one where I'm like, oh my god, this guy's in the fourth round. Um, yeah. Whereas Tyreek and Alshon are still here, which I kind of mm-hmm. like as a wide receiver for. So if either of them make it to me, I'll probably take them over a running back, which it looks like one of them will. So. Yeah, Carlos Hyde was the last real value that I yeah. saw. If he was the still there, field. I would have just like zagged and taken Hyde. Because it's not, I don't know, some zero RB like truthers will tell you that it's like a very strict strategy and you follow it exactly and that's the point of it. But I don't think you should go into a draft doing that, period. I think it's a fine outline. Yeah. But you don't want to, like, ignore screaming hot values when they fall in your screaming lap. Screaming hot values. Uh, yeah, right here, Tyree Kill's kind of the obvious pick as, like, the, the, like, upside home run pick, you know, as my wide receiver four. You know, why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, Tyreek. Apparently, he's going to just light up the fantasy world. Every article that I've read about Tyree Kill says that <laughs> He's poised for a breakout season, which means he's probably going to bust like Todd Gurley. Probably. He's probably going to be like Cordero Patterson or Percy Harvin or just like any of these like these like little quick guys that turn out to not be good. I mean, he does have an Alex Smith throwing him the ball, though. That's like the most concerning part for me, like despite his whatever his skills are. He has Alex Smith, an incredibly conservative offense. Like he's probably not going to be a top five wide receiver no matter how good he is. So. Oh, man. Well, I'm probably going to do the same thing because I am seeing better wide receiver value right now than running back. I mean, yeah. if you're looking at the running back field, what's left, you've got a Ty Montgomery, but I don't feel comfortable drafting him at this spot. You have the rookie sensation. Nope, never mind. He just got drafted, Joe Mixon. Spencer Ware is still out here. He would probably be my top choice at this point mm-hmm. in the draft. But I think there are still other wide receivers, like a Michael Crabtree is a wide receiver for. Maybe, uh, well, Sammy Watkins just got traded. He would have been a great. He would have been perfect here, but now it's a, a little poopy. Now he's got, yeah, Jared Goff throwing him the ball. So I think in that sense, I'm going to, well, I already have Amari Cooper, though. Why the hell would I draft? Just take both the Raiders receivers. What's the worst that happens? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to go with a, uh, hmm, 
I think I gotta go with Crabtree here. This is going to give me uh, a lot of flexibility at the wide receiver three <laughs> position because I can basically just sit on whoever is performing better and trade the other one. Or I could trade one of them. I mean, or trade I typically don't to get draft out from under the Raiders. trade. No. <laughs> I mean, last year they were both wide receiver ones that, I mean, from big Fringe. chunks of the season. So, And they're both top 15 in target numbers, so they're both going to get theirs. <laughs> they're both going to get theirs. Now get theirs. we're reaching the mid-rounds. So is this where we start to look at running backs, Sir Leo? Yeah, I think so. I think it's like the same thing. Now it's really like a swing pick. Like whoever has the better value here, you go with that. Um, and then after your fifth pick, you kind of go running back no matter what. Jamison Crowder. Okay. Well, let's see who we have. I'll have to make this decision relatively quickly. We still have a Sammy Watkins, you know. Mm-hmm. We still have a Brandon Marshall. And in the running back field, we're looking at C.J. Anderson. Just rolling up some blunts and Amir Abdullah. You know what? I'm going to go deep into oh. this zero RB. I'm going to go five wide receivers in a row. Let's do it. And I am going to take a Brandon Marshall oh. here. In the fifth round, I like a Brandon Marshall opposite one Odell Beckham, I think. Sterling Shepard's going to take a little bit of a hit here. It's a second-year wide receiver. Brandon Marshall, you've talked about this before. He should see a lot of red zone targets. So in standard, yeah. he has a lot more value, and you're up. So I'm going to stop talking about B. Marsh. <laughs> uh, I don't really love these wide receivers. Like, I mean, they're they're fine, but they're kind of all the same tier to me at this point. This is like the next like six wide receivers are like all kind of the same to me. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to zag and take a running back. And You're gonna Mark, take Mark Ingram. Ingram. Yeah. yeah, he's kind of like the last really solid running back left. Like, as my, I, I'm actually fine with him as my RB one. Maybe not period, but like with this strategy, I think it's kind of the ideal guy you land. Yeah, yeah, and this is where we kind of get to the section of the draft where you'll really make or break your strategy mm-hmm. if you make the correct value picks in the middle rounds with the running backs. I mean, it's all kind of a crapshoot. You're basically yeah. trying to stack your deck with as many possible running backs that could potentially step into that starting role. So you are looking at guys like Mark Ingram, who was an RB1 in his own right last season. Yeah. Uh, but he was very, you know, boomer bust. Who are you taking this time? I might go back to wide receiver. Um to get that five, yeah. I'm, oh, wait, I already have Demarius Thomas. I don't want to take Emmanuel Sanders, too. I'm not going to do what you did. I'm going to be a good <laughs> fantasy player. Um, I'm going to take Julian Edelman. Yeah, I like it. Another nice, a nice floor pick to round out what could be my last wide receiver at this point. Yeah, and Brandon Cooks, he's getting all the hype. But, mm-hmm. I mean... Looking at the history of the New England Patriots offense, they've really they like these slot receivers, yeah. possession receivers, and they've never really been a team that tries to hit the home run very frequently. Mm-hmm. I need to draft a running back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, Tevin Coleman. Here's another perfect example in the yeah. sixth round. This is a guy where you're looking at prime time opportunity in a great offense. If Freeman regresses mm-hmm. or if he gets hurt, Tevin Coleman is a lock and loaded. RB1. Yeah. So. Perfect zero RB guy. Basically the only true handcuff that might exist in the league right now. Um, and has his own like role as it is. So definitely a good pick Truth. there. Truth. Truth bombs abound. And P squared just got taken because that <laughs> is who I was going to target with my next no, pick. He saved you from yourself with your no, P squared. No, P squared. He's gonna, I, I'm telling you, he's this year's <laughs> Jordan Howard. It's going to happen. Oh, Eddie Lacy. Oh, Eddie Twinkled Toes. They saw the news about Rawls' ankle bocking up again. Yeah. Well, I got five wide receivers, so I'm really looking at, unless there's an insane like tight end value, Yeah. which I don't think there is right now, Tyler Eifert, I guess, would be the best choice of Delaney Walker, but no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Quarterback, we'll just check. Ooh, there is a Russell Wilson, you know. Ooh, seventh round, not terrible. That's like starting to get decent value on the best quarterback of our generation. 
Seventh round is, well, sixth round really is when you start wanting to think about taking a value like Russell Wilson. Mm. And if he falls to me, oh, he already did. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and continue along that train of thought and draft Russell Wilson because I like that value more than the running backs that are left, like Bilal Powell. I mean, these are prototypical zero RB players, Bilal mm -hmm. Powell, Derrick Henry, uh, Danny Woodhead, these type of players. But yeah. I think we'll still have players in the same mold available in the 8th, ninth, 10th round. So I'm going to take my value and run. Take your value and run with it. Um, so I'm interested in help? two running backs here. <laughs> Um, a Derrick Henry and a Rob Kelly, because now that oh, okay. after after the P Ryan implosion, we saw him, you know preseason week one, his fumbling, yeah. his drop passes, he actually hasn't been able to pass Kelly. Kelly might still be the guy. That Rob, yeah, and word from camp is that it was gonna take a lot for mm -hmm. the P the P train to surpass Fat Rob. So it looks like. I guess he's the RB1 in Washington. I guess he's just such an unappealing <laughs> player that, like, it's your it's purely situation. Like, it's just you hoping that he gets a lot of touchdowns is the whole reason you take him. Um, I'm going to take Derrick Henry because I like him more as a player. Yeah. I think his situation, his situation isn't better. I think he's behind a better offensive line. Um, yeah. Top three in the league. Yeah. So I think I'd rather, and it's like another prototypical zero RB guy, you know, an aging DeMarco Murray gets hurt and Henry is probably an RB one. And they're already trying to get him more involved. I was one beat writer was saying it could be like a 60, 40 type of situation. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I buy that, but I mean, yeah, probably not, but you know, he'll, he'll get his Rob Kelly makes it back to me. So now I'll take him. Um, yeah. As, as an RB three now an RB3. or an RB two or, whatever they're As kind of interchangeable at this point rb1 in the eighth <laughs> round yep but you know who's still out there right pro oh I mean, i'm gonna i'm gonna get him don't you worry i'm gonna wait till the time is right and pounce can you tell the people okay let's just go on a little cj pro size tangent here while i'm waiting <laughs> for my next pick can okay. you tell the good people out there what you were saying off air about the comparison to one david johnson who went oh. first overall okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> give you two two stat lines here one player six one helicopter outside my room uh <laughs> six one 225 pounds ran a four five forty the other is six feet flat 220 pounds ran a four four eight forty which is which david johnson i don't know is the they're first. the same player cj pro oh, size is the second that's the point they're the same player what uh pro size no. is that like big guy who's really fast can catch really well so you know all it takes is uh for him to stay healthy and he'll be an rb1 bona fide okay it's my pick 34 seconds here i should get myself another running back shouldn't i eighth round we yeah. still got Bilal pal but eh, he's on the jets uh i guess they would be playing from behind a lot, and he's kind of uh, the third down back there, supposedly. But I'm going to go ahead and take a Terrence West in the eighth round. Yeah, that's good. Because who else does Baltimore really have? I mean, it was all about uh, – I just blanked on his name. Kenneth Dixon. Kenneth Dixon. There we go. Kenneth Dixon until he blew out his knee yeah. like the Septa Baylor. Yep. Bring him that back. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot about that one. That, there it that is. hot drop. But, yeah, I mean, kind of the same reasoning as Rob Kelly in the sense that he should be, like, the early down back. He'll probably yeah. fall into the end zone a good amount of times. Uh, I'm not crazy about Baltimore's offense, but when he got his opportunity last year, he actually surprised a lot of people. And now he's the guy. Mm -hmm. So in the eighth round, the end of the eighth round, mind you, I'm I'm fine with having Terrence West as an RB two in this particular strategy, yeah, uh, or kind of any one of the RBs that could step into the top two roles. That's what we're really dealing with here. I do like RBs. <laughs> you like the RB Sandies? <laughs> Those little RBs roast beef sandos. Damn. Well, see, this would be perfect time to take a John Brown, but apparently he died. So, yeah, I, I don't know. If, if I'm on that John Brown no, train anymore. The stuff about him is very concerning. <laughs> yeah, Arians is Darian's just like, like, man, if yeah, he doesn't get healthy, he's off the team. 
He's gone. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm going to go with a – you – oh, man. Can I bring myself to draft this guy in the ninth round? <sighs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> You're going to do it? I'm going to do it. I'm gonna t- this is going to surprise you. I'm going to take one Jonathan Stewart. Oh, yes, my boy. Oh, my Day God. Two. Finally come in around. Ninth round. No, I didn't come around, but it's a ninth <laughs> round. I mean, yeah. I don't really know about Christian McCaffrey. I mean, I think he has a talent, but hes I don't think he's going to take over the, the three-down role there. I don't so. think he's big enough to handle the full workload. Like, I think Stewart's going to have some early-down role no matter what. Yeah, exactly. And... He'll probably get the goal line work too. So, mm-hmm. ninth round, I like it. And Sweet I mean, and you should be praising this pick. It's Where's a very good pick. It's a very good Thank pick. Thank you very much. This, That's the only reason why I drafted him, really. Despite the person who made the pick, it's a good pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this Ooh. dude's gonna run out the entire clock. If he takes Hunter Henry, we're gonna have a problem. Look at this murder row problem. of running backs I have. Coleman, Terrence West, and Jonathan Stewart. <laughs> That's a murderer's oh, row. God. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I think this guy's going to auto-pick. Jaquiz. Oh, okay, that's fine. I was thinking Jaquiz, but I went Jonathan. Who are you going with, Hunter Henry? Hunter Milf Hunter? Henry, the Milf Hunter himself. Oh, man, those those picks went quick. Uh, Damn. Yeah, no they did. Oh, because defense at. is going. Are these computers? Why are they drafting? They must be gone. <laughs> Yeah, they must have left. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, all right. I think I got to take him now in the 10th round just to make sure you don't get him. It's pro size, and right? my boy CJ <laughs> Pro C <C-C-A. laughs> There he is. Uh, yeah, uh, David Johnson? The next How did you David get David Johnson, Johnson in the 10th round? Bro, David Johnson oh. was going in that range his rookie year. And this is basically pro size's rookie year because he was hurt almost all of last year. There oh you go. God. And when he was healthy for that two-week span – Week and a half span. He was the RB1. What was it, like that 72-yard touchdown scamper he had? Against the Eagles. That's, that's, that's where he got hurt. And I, 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 <laughs> ended. <laughs> that's uh, basically what you get. Big play and an injury from CJ yeah. Prosize. I mean, his game against the Patriots the week before was uh, the stuff of legends. That's the kind <laughs> of stuff you see from a true RB1, which Prosize will Wasn't it be. Just like, it was 100 yards with no touchdowns, right? I actually don't Something remember. Like I mean, I just remember being it really was, it hyped. Was consistently, it was consistently <laughs> solid, but I don't think he got into the end zone. I'm going to look this up. Hold on. I think it was like 115 or 120, something like that, on 15 carries around there. I thought he got a touchdown, but I could be wrong. All right, CJ Procise. Uh, oh, yeah, he didn't get any touchdowns. What was it? New England... 66 rushing yards, 87 receiving yards, no touchdowns. Oh, yes, overall. Got it. Oh, well, look at this. 17 carries that game. That's crazy. I'm actually going to take a Jamal Williams here in the 10th round. I like it. Since we're going 0 RB. And I just don't know how I feel about Ty Montgomery. I know that the... uh, the metrics say that he is the next big thing at the running back position, but I think Jamal Williams is a little bit better in pass protection, and that's going to play a huge factor, especially in Green Bay because they love to pass so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he has a bunch of talent in his own right. So, I mean, Ty Montgomery is still an unknown at the running back position. So yeah. this is what you're looking for. He's not a proven talent at that position. So in the 10th round, if you can grab a guy that could potentially, who is a running back, who's always been a running back, Mm -hmm. that could step into that role and surpass Ty Montgomery in an elite offense led by one Derek Carr. Oh, wait, sorry. Aaron (laughs) Rodgers. They're basically the same player as well. Sure. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, Jamal Williams. He's got those, like, PlayStation moves. Has he? I've actually never seen him play. I don't watch college football. It's for losers. Jukes. Some, some jukers. Juke boxes. Oh, it's back to me now. It was 11th round. Let me see if I can. No, is he still there? You're going to take a Duke? He's... Oh, Zach Ertz is still there in the oh, 11th round. I got to take him. a tight end, yeah. Ertz is I a good a tight end, too. I think he's, like, he's in that tier where he could be around uh, Delaney Walker. He's kind of in that, that second, third tier of tight ends. And with Jordan Matthews, I think his value has increased even yeah. more. I'm with, with Jordan you on Matthews. That. Like the middle of the field should be his domain now that Matthews is gone. Yeah, because I mean, you have Alshon on the outside and Torrey Smith on the outside. Yeah. Burners. Yeah, so I like I like Ertz as like a 
very low key. Like no no one's talking about him, even though like he should be like the possession and red zone guy now. Yeah, he was tight in six last year, y'all. Mm-hmm. Y'all. T E six. And now with Carson Wentz, the next big thing. I mean, come on. <laughs> the next big thing, Carson Wentz. That's what people are saying. Yeah, I've read it online <laughs> somewhere on on Twitter. I think an Eagles read it fan said it. Doesn't matter who said it and in what context. It was on the internet. Oh man, oh, God, this dude is just like yeah, juicing all his this. all his picks. If he takes a Duke from me right now, I'm gonna lose gonna it. Lose it. This is MZ Tasty. No, he's taking Big Ben. He's taking Big Ben. All right, that's his funeral. I'm gonna take a Duke Johnson. Uh, man, just stacking up on these guys. <laughs> stacking up the pass catching running backs who can get a full roll. All right, I can probably at this point. I don't need to keep hammering running backs so hard. What quarterbacks we got left here in the 12th round? This is where Tyro would be perfect if he hadn't lost Sammy. I know, but there's also an Eli. Yeah. There is an Eli. There's also an Andy Dalton. Oh, that Andy. <laughs> the pair him with your AJ, Antonio, Julio, Green. All right, I'm going to do that. Andy Dalton to AJ Green. Lock it in. That stack. That stack. Ooh, I love it. Can't even... If this was daily fantasy, you would be <laughs> smoking. It's season like long Cutler. daily. Basically. Basically, basically. Week to week. All right, let's see. I have four running backs, five wide receivers, my quarterback, and my tight end. Let's see who else is out there. I could probably nab another wide receiver if I really wanted to. Oh, my boy, Zay Jones. <laughs> Your boy, Zay Jones, is still there. Yeah, he's he's replaced John Brown now, since John Brown dead. <laughs> John Brown I think dead. I'm gonna... Zay Jones woke. <laughs> Zay Jones is woke. <laughs> I think I I have to draft Zay Jones. If he's still there, I'm going to take him. You heard it here first. I mean, he probably will be. I don't. I don't know if he's not really that hyped. Let me just check if there's a running back that I'm severely missing out on. Uh oh, DeAndre Washington, <laughs> Kenny Galladay. Yeah, there's Ooh. another wide receiver that's getting some hype. Yeah, that, that's the hype pick right there in the twelfth round. Oh man, but Josh Doxson is still out there too. Whoo hoo. Man, <laughs> but I already said it. I gotta draft my boy Zay. Gotta he looks Zay. solid tonight too in that preseason game. I mean, there's no Sammy, and Jordan <laughs> Matthews is just a big pile of meh. That's so, true. And he apparently is also dead. What is he week to week? Yeah, he like immediately right got hurt. <laughs> like first practice on the Bills gets hurt week to week. And whenever, injury. yeah, whenever you hear the designation week to week, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> They, didn't, they skipped right over the day to day. They're just going week to oh, week. Oh Next God, week. you might miss week one, bro. <laughs> yeah. Zay Jones, but oh man, is is Josh Dawson gonna make it back to me? But I only have four running backs. This is, this is a dangerous game. <laughs> you this take is a dangerous six wide game. Receivers and four running backs. Nah, I, I would think I would have to take a Geo Bernard if he makes it to me in the thirteenth oh, yeah, round. That's, that's a pretty solid zero RB pick at that point. Yeah, because I mean, oh, Josh Gordon, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> what is Jeremy Hill is Jeremy Hill, and oh, they're Doxon win anyways. Whew. Makes my decision a Saves lot easier. You from I mean, yourself. Take one, Giovanni Bernard. Because really, you don't know what you're going to get in that Cincinnati backfield, and their offensive line is shit, essentially. So you might as well take a guy who has proven to be a solid pass catcher. Yeah. Out of the backfield. Makes sense. Of course it does. I draft. Okay. All right. Let's look at what we got swimming in the waters near me. Dun, dun. Right, dun, I see dun. who I'm going to take. I see you. I see you. Unless there's a wide receiver. I'm like, oh, Tyler Lockett. <laughs> oh, I know. No. Tyler Lockett's sitting out there. Decision oh. time. I mean, I can probably take both. There's just John like Ross. Take a kicker. Just, just grab all, got all of the Bengals. <laughs> just the the three way Bengals stack. That's the move right there. Oh my Kevin God, MZ I... Tasty, what are you doing? MZ Tasty, let's bleed in the clock. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Who's he gonna go with? Marlon Tyler. Mack. Marlon Mack, M squared. All right, I'm gonna take a Rex Burkhead here. Is my final running back. Why not? 
why not? Just as though maybe he gets the job. Maybe Mike Gillisley is a Mirage. Mirage Gillisley. <laughs> is this oh. his new nickname? <laughs> That's it. Oh, shit. It's right back to you. And Tyler Lockett, Sands kicker. Here we go. Yeah, why not? The I mean, best of your who knows? Squad See, ever you, you hold on to this Rex Burkhead, and then Gillisley gets hurt. <laughs> there you and go. And you're sitting on a gold mine. Sitting on a gold mine. I mean, this is the third mock in a row where we haven't drafted both a kicker and a defense. <laughs> so, again, just to reiterate the theory is that you wait until right before week one, just yeah. in case something happens, and then you cut your losses with one of these late kind of lottery ticket type draft picks. Yeah, this is the, mi the mid-August strategy. Don't do this if you're drafting like two days before week one starts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then don't that would do be... It. Uh, <laughs> Not a very good decision, unless you're so confident that you can win without a you're kicker. Like, I've seen players him. do it. They're like, I can't drop anyone. <laughs> I'm just gonna go kickerless, and then I they tried lose that by like before. Three. I don't. You remember did it. try. To... I don't. Know. I've probably lost. Well, who's out there? DeAndre Washington. Okay, okay, I see you. I'll I see guess. You. I mean, that's the the logical pick. But I have too many Raiders. I don't want to be such a homer. Or an Alfred Morris. Maybe he's really the handcuff. Oh, yeah. Amos still sitting out here. No, I'm going to go homer pick. DeAndre Washington. <laughs> the triple right homer said, squad. <laughs> right after I said I wasn't going to do it. But apparently he's the handcuff now. And okay. I like any handcuff who's sitting behind, like, a corpse of a running back. That's true. Which is <laughs> not Marshawn. that Marshawn. I mean, he's close to corpse status. He we really don't really is. know what we're going to get from Marshawn at this point. Week one, he could come out and just die on the field. So <laughs> There's a strong <laughs> chance. <laughs> oh, man. He better be eating his Skittles. He'll definitely DeAndre, be doing that. See, I still don't know how I feel. I think that Jalen Richard is probably going to emerge mm -hmm. as the handcuff, but right now DeAndre Washington's putting up a good fight, and he's getting the reps. So... Yeah, I'll do it. And then I'm going to have to draft like a kicker. Or I could just draft Alfred Morris and just say, forget kickers. <laughs> forget deep. Just screw it. That wouldn't be a bad pick just because we're going to find out in the next couple of weeks who is really the handcuff in Dallas. Like that, That'll be pretty clear by the end of preseason. You know I'm what? You just convinced seven me. Weeks. You just convinced me. Yeah. You I'm going to take him out. He's going to get taken before you <laughs> get him out. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Maybe Amo is going to be sitting there. This guy's going to time out. And take Amo. Oh, he, oh. oh Ebron's. One more pick. <laughs> there he is sitting oh, in my lap. You got lucky. And I've completed the draft without a kicker or a defense. <laughs> but, yes, this would be the, the perfect pick. You know, I kind of just sit on Amo. If he's the guy, then I keep him, obviously. If he's not, then I drop his ass. Exactly. All right. Who should I do this with? Which running back is worth holding in case of an injury? Probably James Conner in case Le – well, Levell's not even – no, Levell's not even practicing, actually, so that's not a good idea. Conner. Maybe, maybe Donta <laughs> Foreman in case Lamar Miller dies next week. Devonta Freeman is still there? <laughs> Devonta <laughs> Freeman, that's it. So my pick in the fifth yet. round. I mean, I don't really love any of these. Any of these. these uh, I'll, do, I'll do Dante Foreman in case Lamar Miller uh, gets hit by a car between now and week one. Yeah, uh, which could happen, you know. All right. Boom. Draft it's done. is done. Oh, Jay Cutler with the last pick <laughs> of the draft. Is. Boom. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. VS versus. All right. Draft complete, guys. The zero it. RB. Which is the most painful strategy to uh, try out, even though it's a mock. It's still it's it's hard to pass on the like the running backs in the early rounds. It's a tough yeah, one. I could have. I had mean, if you Gordon look at Ajayi. if you look at both of our top three, well, your top four actually pretty legit. Yeah. The only downside about my top four would be that I drafted two wide receivers from the same <laughs> I mean, team. Not ideal, but you know. They're both wide receiver. We've seen this happen before. Sure. Teams can support two wide receiver ones. We've seen it before, right? It's this happened, happened once before is this a thing? in the history of the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> Just once. But, uh, 
But Amar, I mean, look at their offense. It's stacked. <laughs> they got Jared Cook at the tight end position oh, that's now. Your, that's your go-to. <laughs> They're stacked. They got Jared Cook. I mean, did you see those catches last year in Dallas? Woo! Woo! But a Brandon Marshall in the fifth. Okay, if we just we forget my rounds four and five, that's kind of just okay. <laughs> They're good wide receivers, but I probably could have made better picks there. I'll admit it. Yeah. Uh, I kind of panicked. I panicked pick <laughs> Crabtree. I'll be honest, because I couldn't bring myself to take like a Kelvin Benjamin there. I was yeah. also thinking about taking a Martavis, but that's the fourth round it seemed. Yeah, that probably would have been the choice because he's that boom or bust type yeah, of player. the upside and to I go with your have... pretty safe trio. Yeah. So I, I would have probably, if we could redo the draft, I'd probably take Martavis there, who was available. But, I mean, Julio, Omari, and Dez is a top three. Yeah, and your that's... top three, Green, Nelson, and DT, or Tyreek, really? Tyreek, yeah. It's pretty, I mean, this is pretty ideal. Good. Yeah, looking at my squad, because I feel like the group of running backs I got is, like, what people are looking for when they do zero RB. Like, there's a couple yeah. safe guys and then a bunch of the, like, pass catchers who could turn into something. Um, so this is kind of like the best-case scenario looking at it. Um, and I still don't feel very good about it. I'm not a big zero RB fan. Like, We both aren't, really. Yeah, because I'm just imagining week one, and I'm starting Mark Ingram and probably Rob Kelly, realistically. Um and I'd probably lose. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Maybe Rob maybe. Kelly falls in the end zone. We don't, we're not sure what the usage is going to be in New Orleans. Mark yeah. Ingram is I really... Mean, for 0RB to work, you really need one of the running backs you get to hit. Like, it doesn't... You won't, you won't win your league if your running backs don't work out or if they're just fine. Like, if you just have a couple, like, RB2s, you're not going to end up winning because you won't. You need, like... You need a true rb1 to win your league like period just you need that advantage um yeah so if they, i mean that's what you're hoping for with zero rb is that one of these like backup depth guys falls into that position so if we look at the guys last year for example mm -hmm. who hit uh you have rolling up those blunts i yeah. mean he was a touchdown machine who was who was a later draft pick you have jordan howard yeah who was like a 13th or 14th round draft pick mm-hmm who turned into an RB1. Jay Ajahi as well came on late in the season. Uh, Crow. He was yeah, late round, I would right? Say Crow. Eighth, um, ninth round. I would say Spencer like, Ware. Spencer Ware, yeah. At least for like the first half of the season was like a yep. savior, zero RB savior. Uh, like Melvin he, Gordon. He was more too. of an obvious choice. Yeah. Oh, Melvin Gordon as well, yeah. Like he was like fringe zero RB. He had like a fifth or sixth round ADP, but like he, he was an RB1 all season, well, until he got hurt. But. Yeah. So it happens. It's just like your odds are lower. Your odds of getting an RB1 are lower in the later rounds. Um, you're also just protecting yourself by going the safe wide receivers early. Like you're less likely to have your team totally implode, but also probably less likely to win your league. So it's kind of a trade-off. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is the like best case scenario too. If you look mm -hmm. at how the draft board fell, and this is what we always kind of preach too. You don't go in with a specific strategy because you don't know how other players are going to draft. And if the value is there, you kind of have to take the value. In this case, if you look at the first round, it still went one, two, three running backs, which yeah. is a bit odd considering that uh, Ezekiel Elliott yeah. is suspended for six Zeke games. But hey, weird. if this guy <laughs> wants to waste his third overall pick on somebody who he won't be able to play until week eight, theoretically... Uh, yeah. Sure, that's perfect for everyone else in the draft. <laughs> but Julio, I mean, you could have really taken Julio, Antonio, Odell if you're looking at a wide receiver yeah. there. They're all kind of, it's a big three. But look at how the second round fell. This is really mm -hmm. kind of what you want to, to fall into if you're going with zero RB. We had five running backs taken in a row after you made the Jordy pick. Mm -hmm. So from 10th, I mean, you're in the 10th spot, all the way to where I am in the 4th spot. There wasn't a wide receiver taken. So I had the opportunity to take Amari Cooper there, which is probably who I would have taken anyways. Yeah, I think your top three is those three receivers, regardless of, like, even if you're just, I'm just yeah. going to do a mock. Like, that's just how you, you would have done it because of how the board fell. Exactly. The board fell per... I mean, if you look at who I could have taken as a running back in the second round, Dalvin Cook, Crow... I mean, these guys, yeah, you wouldn't take that. over Amari Cooper no. or even some of the other wide receivers like Des Bryant. I wouldn't take any of those guys over Des Bryant there. Yeah. So it was really kind of the stars aligned.
for me in this draft. But then, you know, that Michael Crabtree pick was questionable. <laughs> uh, but Brandon Marshall in the fifth round. And then I think Tevin Coleman is what you're looking for when you do zero RB drafts. Really, this yeah. is a guy. I mean, it's it would be a bit painful in week one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just like you said, you would have to start an Ingram and a, a Rob Kelly probably. I would probably have to dole out like a Jonathan Stewart theoretically. <laughs> yeah, and probably. Maybe a, a Tevin Coleman as well, just hoping yeah. that he gets into the end zone. Or uh, Terrence West, I guess, would be the safer pick there mm-hmm. just because you know that he's going to have guaranteed usage. But we should have the flex position locked up. Yeah. That's what this strategy i mean that's what robust rb does as well for you yeah. you're trying to race to win These the extreme flex. strategies are like you win your flex you win one position completely and then all you need to do is win one slot at the other position like if if you can find an rb1 doing zero rb you should have a good chance to win the league because you're already winning three other spots yeah exactly so if like you had a jordan howard or jay Ajahi last year yeah you were probably sitting pretty 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 uh, pretty pretty so who let's just make some predictions prediction uh-huh. time that's what the offseason's for oh, okay who do you think is going to be this year's jay ajahi or jordan howard somebody who is kind of being drafted in the latter half that might step into an rb1 bro it's role. cj pro size i already told you um, cj well he's <laughs> david johnson that's true all right so besides cj pro size uh looking at like the mid rounds hmm because Ajayi didn't really like. I mean, he had Arian Foster in front of him, so he kind of had an injury get him the job. Um, Melville Gordon kind of did too, because Woodhead got hurt. Um, yeah, and so, then he just stepped into that every down roll. Yeah, I kind of think Mark Ingram, even though that's like a safe pick, is like pretty ideal because like he has an, like an aging Peterson in front of him, and like when if he gets hurt, like Ingram goes back to potentially being an RB one. Yep, um, I like that. And Ingram, he's kind of the forgotten man right yeah. now. I feel like we have a couple of guys that are getting overlooked. Carlos mm-hmm. Hyde is one of them. Yeah, Carlos Hyde for sure. Like his his ADP is like a, a li- not even that much higher. He went like three picks before Ingram in this. Um, yeah, Carlos Hyde's for sure forgotten. Man, he has like no real competition there, and it's a bad offense. But he's been an RB one in a bad offense for like a couple of years in a row when healthy. So yeah, and I mean he does get involved in the passing game a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I mean he's he's the guy there, and if you can get that. The top dog, even though that's the 49ers, but still, you know, <laughs> Carlos Hyde. He's shown yeah. that, that he has a talent. But, yeah, I would probably go with – so you're saying Mark Ingram. Yeah. If I had to make a guess as to who would kind of step into that elite role, <laughs> do I want to double down on Paul Perkins? Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> I mean, you talk about P-squared so much, I feel like you have to believe he can be an RB1. I, let's go P-squared, baby. <laughs> P-squared – it's going. I'm touting him as the next Jordan Howard, so I might as well stick Dude, with you're it. Basically I was all about. It. I was all about Jordan Howard last year. That's true. You ben were. Ben on the Jordan Howard hype train, and look what happened there. So it Paul Perkins. Out. I mean, I watched him. I mean, I saw a few of the UCLA games. He definitely has the talent. Mm-hmm. The only thing that concerns me about New York is, is he going to be the three down back or is he going to be that between the twenties back? If he's a between the twenties back, then he loses a lot of value. Yeah. And you have guys like Darkwing Duck that seem to just always kind of be lingering around. Yeah. Trying to vulture touches from him. But I think they kind of committed to Paul Perkins at the end of last year, but I don't want to fall into the same trap because we saw this happen to Rashad Jennings at mm-hmm. the end of the 2015 season, and then he was the hot value going into last year's draft. Oh, Rashad Jennings, you can get him in the, the seventh or eighth round, and he's going to be the RB1 in New York. Mm-hmm. But I think Paul Perkins, he's young, he's got the talent, and they should theoretically have a good offense, I mean, at the very yeah. least. Yeah, I mean, so Parker Paul, isn't a, a, a bad one for sure. Let's go. Let's go. Player profiler on Paul Perkins here, <laughs> just while we're talking about him. All right, Paul Perkins and Zay Jones are these my new hype trains? It seems like it. Paul Perkins here. Ooh, yeah. Never mind. Let's just not talk about <laughs> Paul Perkins. <laughs> it's a pretty it's bad. Is, well, I mean, what is? Burst score, 
could be ways and sums up. Workout metrics. Yes. Workout metrics are yeah. They're <laughs> meh, I guess. He's got a four five forty. That's not terrible. That's like David Johnson, right? Yeah, that's like and CJ Pro Cisse. And CJ Pro Cisse. I mean he's smaller. He's five ten. Oh well that's pretty bad then. And uh in two oh eight. Two oh eight? Oh my god. Oh. So Pro Size runs faster than him and is and is bigger than him. Bring me the Pro Size, please. No, but I mean <laughs> Paul Perkins has got that <laughs> that agility score. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Actually, he's mm-hmm. got nothing, basically. I'm just going off of the eye test. I mean, there's the intangible. Which has won me championships in the past. So, yeah, Paul Perkins. I'm already invested. I'm already invested. <laughs> I, I can't go back now. This is, you know, the trait of a, a great fantasy player. Somebody who just <laughs> digs in and never changes their mind. I made this opinion, and now there's no going back. It was like the Todd Gurley of last year. Oh, no, boy. no, he's gonna turn it around. <laughs> he's Todd Gurley. It Let's talk about happened. Todd Gurley before we sign off. Okay. He's getting drafted in the middle of the second round. What do you think of Todd Gurley this year? He's kind of like that post hype. He's t- he's telling everyone that he's gonna make a comeback. So I mean, he's talking the talk. <laughs> I'm glad he's walk? confident. Uh, I mean, they improved their line. They they got Whitworth, right? Um, yeah. So their line's a bit better. Um, and the bigger thing is that Jeff Fisher's gone, and they got uh, Sean McVeigh now. So the <laughs> the hope is that the offense is just, like, better in general now that it has, like, a better offensive mind behind a, at least slightly better line. I think that's what you have. And you, that, and you're hoping that Gurley gets more receiving work than he did last year. But they also went out and got Lance Dunbar, which doesn't really speak to him Gurley getting the third down work, which kind of concerns me. Yeah. What do you think of Sammy Watkins? Do you think he's going to have any impact on that offense? Uh, They're going to be able to spread it out a little bit? I mean, he should help. (laughs) He should help. When he's healthy, which is like always the thing with Watkins, he might only play four games. Who knows? Um, He'll be questionable the entire year. So, I mean, he should at least (laughs) help stretch to the field. He should at least have like the Deshaun Jackson effect of like defenses have to respect it and like that helps a little bit. They can't. Defense shouldn't be able to fully stack the box if Watkins is on the field, even if Goff can't get it to him. Like, it should help. Um, well, then there's Jared Goff, right? This is his second year. Do you think there's going to be any improvement? Like, maybe a little bit, but his rookie year was, like, historically bad. So I don't, I don't know if it can, like, really... Sunshine. I don't, I don't know if it can get that much better. I think best case for him is, like, mediocre replacement level. Oh, jeez. Uh, so, but, I mean, Gurley, I think, can bounce back. Um Second round? I don't think I would have taken him if let's say That's I was a this high. guy. I wouldn't have taken him there. But like let's say it's like the two three turn and I, if I have like Lev Bell with my first pick, uh then I'd yeah. probably take Gurley. If I'm pairing him with an elite running back, then I'm fine with Gurley. So if you're that guy, seventh overall, so he takes Odell in the first round. Yeah. You're saying you'd probably just take a wide receiver there. Or would you take a Lamar Miller? Uh I oof. That's tough because I like Lamar this year. I like him to like the touchdowns to swing back in his favor because that was like the biggest hit against him last season. Is he scored so few touchdowns, not as many as he probably can, should have. Can we just recall Lamar's game when he just went off? Like the one game he went off with that crazy reception yeah. where he just somehow stayed up and fell into the end zone, which lost you the week. I remember playing that. Me. I, just, I, was, I just want. You that. only had Lamar left, and I was up like 30 points. I was like, well, Lamar hasn't been that good this year. I'll be fine. And then he, that was his one beast week of the year. Uh, oh, wait. No, no, no. That was that was the week where he got me within striking distance. Oh, he then got John me Brown five point three points, and then John Brown with his 54 receiving yards won me the God, week. That was, I tilted <laughs> into space, and I've never returned. I'm still up there. <laughs> just floating around. <laughs> it's, um, it's a new season. I, yeah, I think if I'm number seven... And it's, I don't think I, oh, I'd probably go Odell there, I guess. Yeah, I probably would. Um, yeah, I guess I'd probably just go wide receiver, wide receiver at that point. I yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, you have a bunch of wide receivers you could take there. Amari Cooper, T.Y. Hilton, Des yeah. Bryant, all probably would have been yeah, a little probably, bit better. I but I like Gurley been. at the, the end of the, like if I had drafted David Johnson and Gurley fell to me at the end of the second round, I yeah. would have taken him there for sure. That's a good spot for him. Oh, man, can you imagine if that guy went David Johnson, Todd Gurley, and then Des Bryant at the turn there? Woo! 
That's why you, you, you just sign off right start. there. You won. You can auto draft the rest of the way. It doesn't even matter. Saucy start. <laughs> mm. All right, we should probably wrap this right. bad boy Let's up. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Wrap it in. Bra bra Let me bra begin. Exactly. Bra bra. Uh, all right. This has <laughs> been Bench Stash Zero RB Mock Draft Extravaganza, the dankest of mock drafts completed. Coming um, at you with our takes like Mark Ingram and Paul Perkins. <laughs> P squared. RB1. CJ Procise. CJ um, Procise and Zay Jones. And Zay Jones. That's right. The other. Zay, Zay, Zay. Hey, Zay, Zay. Um, <laughs> Getting Zay, Zay in here. Um, all right. We'll be back yeah. next week with uh, another one. Probably. Robust? Yeah, we'll do Robust. We can, and then we can get in one more right before yeah the season starts so we'll get at least two more mock drafts for you guys maybe some bonus ones we'll see we'll see yeah we might we should probably throw in some bonus uh footage some bonus footage some behind the scenes work yeah you know where we're just like walking around our job holding up the camera talking fantasy football with people looking <laughs> at us with quizzical expressions in the background like what the f maybe you, you know. can bro I, I work in a sensitive environment so i don't know maybe you can i'll just do that in class <laughs> I'll, I'll just start putting statistics up on the board. Like, listen, All right, kids. guys. If, if I am sitting in the fifth round and I'm staring at a, a Jamison Crowder or a Sammy Watkins, who should I draft? Because, I mean, Sammy is more explosive, but Jamison's in the better offense. And they'd be like, shut up. We hate you. Tomorrow you should give your, your class a quiz where, you, where the only question is what round would you take Zeke Elliott and just, just see what the, what the consensus is. The problem is I mentioned football, and they're like, ooh, Real Madrid. Oh, like, oh. get out of here with that. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right, let's All close right. it up. All right, that, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and, uh, yeah, flippy floppies. Flippy floppies. Come find us on Twitter. Oh, yes. At, it's it's at, at the top of the screen, but do this. Come yeah, yeah, us. right up there somewhere. Come up here. us. Come if you build it, they will come. Come. <laughs>